up and down. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is our second video in this PT Cruiser head gasket. In our last video right here, or over there, we got all our timing components off. That's a big step. In this video, we're gonna work on getting our head off. So that's our goal, pull the head, get all the peripherals off of the head, and then send it off to the machine shop so they can work their magic. They'll grind the valves, replace the valve seals, and all that kind of stuff. So to get started, first, we're gonna drain the oil, drain the coolant, and then we'll work on getting the exhaust off. Well, let's hop to it. So we got the oil draining. Let me show you where the coolant drain plug is. On the driver's side right there is our drain. So we'll loosen that up and get her going. So for the exhaust, I'm under the vehicle. My advice is to jack the vehicle up as high as safely as possible to give yourself enough room. I think I can get to three of them from down here. A couple on this side, and then maybe from this side with a long extension. And then the last one I might have to get from up above. We'll give it a shot. The exhaust went a lot smoother than anticipated. I just used my impact couple extensions with my 13 mil socket. That was able to get the three bottom ones. And then that top one is pretty easy to get to from up here, right there. And you can actually probably get to two of them or, or maybe even three of them from up here. But the exhaust is, is separated. Now we're gonna leave the manifold on. It's gonna come off with the head. So we don't have to worry about any manifold bolts, just those four on that flange. All right, doing good. Let's pull off our air box. We have our hose clamp here. It's a flathead or an eight millimeter. Got our connector here. This red tab goes up and then just pinch, pull it off, pull off our clips. And then this can come off. We're gonna pull this off the rest of the way. Let's give it a tug. There we go. We have this little breather tube that can come off. Pull it off this side too. There we go. Just leave them together. Now I'm gonna pull my battery out all the way we have our cam position sensor connector. It has a security tab, just this little red tab you push. There we go, pop it up. And then we can pinch the connector and pull it off. There we go. We have this little connector in the back we can pull off. Okay. Then we have our heater hose bracket. It's two 13 millimeter bolts. I'm just gonna put the bolts back so I remember where they go. Well, that's it on this side for now. Let's hop over to the intake manifold. We can take our throttle cable cover off. This clips here, pulls out. We'll undo our throttle cables. There's one, two. It's just a screwdriver. There's a little tab that we can pull out. There we go. We'll slide it. Perfect. We have this little tube here we can pop off. It just pop up. There we go. A couple of electrical connectors. They have the little red tab on them. Push the tab back and then pinch, pull off. This one doesn't have a tab, it's just really hard to push. There we go. We have a little harness retainer here we could pop off. There we go. This connector here, red tab, pinch, pull. It also has a harness retainer. Pop that off. One more retainer in the back. Okay, all those are loose. Perfect. Got this little hose here. Maybe it'll pop off our PCV valve. Now this has a little hose clamp on it, so this hose is already split in the past. Maybe it'll come off. Okay, good. Just tighten this up to put the clamp on so I don't lose it. There's a 13 millimeter bolt in the back. One more hose over here. It goes to our brake booster. And then you have five bolts in the front. That'll get our upper intake off. See if we got everything. All right. Take our ignition coil off, pull the plug wires. Coil connector just has that red little lock tab. Push that through, pinch, pull off. There we go. 10 millimeter bolts. Pull these wires out. Nice, making good progress. We'll pull our upper radiator hose off. I'm going to pull it off from the radiator side here. There we go. I'm going to pull the thermostat housing off. 10 millimeter. Raise the engine back up a little. Get those bolts out. This whole thing can come out together. Pour the thermostat. 
Now we can pull off our injector harness. They have red security locks. We want to pop up. I like using an angled pick like this. Let's give it a pop. There we go. Nice. They should be regular push tabs after that. Push it in, pull it up. We have one connector down here. It's like to our coolant temp sensor. It also has a little red security lock. They have all these locks. They must have been afraid their connectors wouldn't stay connected. There we go. Pull it back. Pop it off. So that's just on the other end of this injector harness. Now we can get this whole harness out of the way. Just a harness clip here. Push it through. No harness clip in the front here. Push it through. Nice. Then our injector rail, we have two 13 millimeter bolts. Should be able to pull the injector rail right out. Give it some wiggles. We're gonna leave our fuel line hooked up. We're just gonna set our whole rail up over here. Just out of the way. Okay, so far so good. Next is our lower manifold. These are 10 millimeter bolts. All right, let's see what this is connected to. Oh, we still have our oil dipstick, 10 millimeter. Okay. And I'll take this thermostat housing off, 10 millimeter bolts. Be two of them, one on top, one on the bottom. Oh, there's three. Two on the bottom. All right, there we go. That can just stay out of the way for us. Nice, I think the front is done. The side is done. Check the back. I think the back is done. We have this bracket, but it doesn't have to come off at the moment. It can stay on. So now let's pull our valve cover. These are all eight millimeter bolts. There's two in the center. And the rest around the perimeter. Nice. There we go. So now comes another challenge. We have to pull our camshafts off to get to the bolts. We also have to pull this plate off here. This plate goes all the way down to the bottom. In order to do that, we have to pull off our cam sprockets. These two cam sprockets, we gotta pull off. A lot of well-designed camshafts will have a spot for you to put a wrench. That's like the majority of cars out there. But this one does not. It's just round all the way down. So what I'm gonna try is the vice grip method. We're just gonna put a vice grip right in between these lobes. We're not on anything important. So hopefully as I bust this loose going in that direction, this vice grip will hold it. Now it's resting on the other cam, so hopefully we won't get any spin or anything like that. But just to double check that we won't have interference between our valves and our piston head, I'm gonna take the spark plugs out, peek down each hole with a flashlight, and make sure that every single piston is just below top dead center. So that'll give the valves any clearance. So if the cam does spin and the valve opens up, there'll be enough clearance between the valve and the piston head that we won't run into any issues. That's the plan anyway. Let's give it a shot. Spark plugs. Okay, that looks... Okay, so these two ends are at top dead center. So I'm just gonna turn the crank counterclockwise about 30 degrees just to lower that piston a little. See what that did. Perfect. Okay. Might go even 90 degrees. Plenty out of the way. Plenty, plenty, and plenty. Let me show you what I did. So that little triangle was facing straight up. Now it's facing 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that puts cylinder number one and cylinder number four about halfway down in their stroke, which also puts cylinder number two and three halfway up in their stroke. So plenty of room. Feeling good about this. So now, if only we can get this to break loose. 18 millimeter. Hopefully our vice grip holds it. Oh, it's spinning. Yeah. Ugh. Come on. Nope, it's just spinning. Okay. That's one failed attempt. Let's see what else we can try. All right, we're gonna try another method. On both these cams, there's a hole drilled in them. One here, one here. Facing up, if you have the cams in the right position. I have a 930 seconds Allen socket that fits perfectly snug in that hole. Like so snug, you have to tap it a little to get it to bottom out. Perfect. Nicely bottomed out and it comes out with just a little wiggling. There you go. So it's a perfectly tight fit. Now, as I turn the cam, this is gonna catch on a hefty chunk of metal. Hopefully that'll be enough to hold it 
to break this bolt loose. Now I'm not worried about the valves again because we have our pistons out of the way. So let's see if this works. Okay, I'm gonna hold it because it's gonna... There we go. It's making contact. Let's see if that's enough. Nice, whoo. Wow, that worked. Kind of surprised actually. Cool, that's a little trick. Pop that out, Let's see if we can do the other side. Bottomed out. So this one's gonna hit right here. Let me put a little rag there. Okay, there we go. Nice. Give it a tug. Nice. Got it. I'll bring it back up. There we go. Yeah, our surface is perfect. Pull that out. So that's the trick. Now, believe it or not, there are cam locking tools. I'm sure they're cheap enough, but I just don't have them. So, alternative. Pull these off. Okay. All right. Now we can pull this cover off. So we want to pull this off all the way. And then we have two 13 millimeter bolts here, and then the rest should be eight millimeter. I got all the bolts. I'm assuming it comes just out of the top. Oh, there we go. Maybe it comes out of the bottom. Yeah, it looks like it's coming out of the bottom. Maybe not. Jack this up, maybe that's my problem. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect. Sweet, I think we're ready to pull our cams out and our head bolt. We got 10 mil for our big ones. These are 10 mil down here too. And the rest should be eight mil. Take the cam position sensor off too. Just eight mil. Now this is very important not to get anything magnetic next to this tone ring. That can mess up your cam position sensor reading. All right, let's keep going. I'll start in the middle and work my way out. Now these caps are not labeled, so they have to be put on your bench or wherever you're putting it in the order they came off so that we can be sure to put them back in the order that they are right here. Also the same orientation is important which side of it's facing forward. Same thing here, starting in the middle. Just gonna tap on this a little. There we go. All right, 15 millimeter and a breaker bar. All right, now that they're all cracked loose, Let's buzz them the rest of the way out. Nice, now make sure our rockers are in the right spot. I'm gonna put the cams back on. We're ready to lift the head. Remember our holes face straight up. There we go. This is just gonna hold the rockers in place so you don't get a big rocker mess. Just gonna snug down the two middle. All right, I'm gonna set you up in a new spot. One thing I'm concerned about is this, maybe being in my way. But I'm gonna lower the vehicle some and see what we can do about lifting this out. All right, here we go. The head is still stuck to the block. See if there's a spot to pry. Might just be the dowels. There we go, nice. So still in the front here. Or maybe I'm hanging up on the exhaust. Push that out of the way. Ah, there we go. Just a stubborn dowel. Well, move this light out of my way. Just gonna drape a towel right here. So I think this manifold does have to come off because I can't get it otherwise. 10 millimeter bolts, one, two, three, four to get that heat shield off. And hopefully everything comes off and use the impact. There's that heat shield. Now we have access to our bolts, a couple of bolts, all 10 millimeter. That lower heat shield can get pushed out of the way as much as possible to get to all the bolts. So that's what's coming off next. We'll just leave this manifold behind. It's a big chunk of metal. This thing's already heavy enough, so let's do it. I just had a feeling these were not gonna come off easy, but they actually did. So I just cracked all of them loose and they should just come right out. 10 millimeter. 
Okay, one more. Okay, it is free. And yeah, I think that's what it was. I wonder if there's an exhaust bracket or something that I missed. When we get this all off, I'll look real quick. But let's see what that did. Oh yeah, <laughs> stinking little thing. Now what am I stuck on? Nothing, just that hose up and down. Haha, -ha, got it. So it probably normally isn't that hard. I must have just missed something with this exhaust. No big deal. We got it. So let's go unbolt the rest of the stuff off the head and take a peek at the valves. So not really much to take off. This is the front intake manifold side. We just have our two bolts here for our water that goes to our heater core. We'll just pop those off. We have this little anti-radio device. All right, keep turning it. We got 13 mil for this bracket. And then this ground strap. I think that's it. And then this is the timing belt side and nothing there. Okay, flip her over. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. The machine shop will clean that up really nicely. They'll regrind the valves, give us a fresh surface, clean up everything so it looks like a brand new head when we get it back. Sweet, nice job guys. All right, we got the head off, that's a big job. So a few hiccups, one was pulling off that timing gear, that cam sprocket. I didn't have a cam locking tool, but we found an alternate method of doing it. Worked out pretty nice. We'll do that same method, tightening it back up. And then that exhaust hang up, that's my bad. There is a bracket on the bottom of that manifold that we could have taken off. But to be honest, I'm glad we took it off of the head. Those bolts just buzz right out nice and smooth, no issues, and it made that head just that much more light. Pulling it up and over this thing, bumper. So awesome. If you have any questions, post down below. Our next video will be prepping our surface here, putting our head back on and bolting it down. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.